Okay, uh, we'll call the meeting to order. Um, Committee of Whole meeting Monday, July 5th, 2021. Um, Want to thank and welcome everyone uh, at home who's watching. And um, we are going to um, start tonight with um, the reaffirmation of the oath of office. Um, it's the first time that we've done it. Normally, it's uh, it's uh, at your desk. We may st we may still have it here. Um, yeah, and there's a link too. So if you you can use either one. So council, if you're ready, we'll do our our first um, oath of office uh, reaffirmation. We do hereby accept the office of council and will diligently, faithfully, and impartially discharge to the best of our ability the duties of the office as may be imposed upon us by law. Thank you. Um, next is the adoption of the agenda. There were uh, a few changes. One was in format and another was in um, some deletions, a couple of mine, because Councillor Guitar McDonnell is going to speak to them. And uh, for the folks at home, uh, Mr. Jacques Dubé of AJN Investments was supposed to give a presentation tonight, but uh, he's not available to do so. Um, we'll uh, keep the invitation out to Mr. Dubé. He's welcome anytime to come and make a presentation. Um, Councillor uh, Christy Carrier is going to do her presentation, and we're going to move it up a bit. But before we do all that, um, are we okay to adopt the agenda with uh, the amended changes? Can someone move? I have if, some, something I, to add. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yes, yes. I would, I would just like to add to the agenda like um, where we are at with the rental space. Okay. So rental space, uh, just remember that as we go along, uh, Councilor Carrier, Thank already you. Carrier. Uh, I, Deputy Mayor Burke. Yeah, I would also like to add under my category uh, the uh, grass cutting in the what used to be called the Jacket River area. Okay. Any other uh, deletions or uh, additions? Can we get uh, a mover for the uh, to a job the agenda? I move that the agenda be ad adopted as amended with changes. Uh, can we get a seconder? I'll second it. So the motion is um, moved by Councillor Carmichael and seconded by Councillor uh, Rorty Carrier. All those uh, to the question. All those, pardon me? All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Okay, the agenda has been adopted. So uh, we will then start with the presentation uh, by Councillor uh, Christy Rorty Carrier. Um, Christy. Okay, so this is a presentation um, explaining a little bit about the uh, Monday.com program, which I think could be a great addition if used um, by council and staff. Um, so in preparation for this, I did a couple of boards that I've added you to. I've added you to one of them, I believe, as guests, and that is just one of the features of this program where you can set it up and you uh, pay per member. But you can also have uh, certain boards. I believe it's up to two boards that a guest can be on. So say, for example, you were working with a contractor on something. You can have the project outlined in this, in this platform. And you can add the contractor or you can add different people who are working on it onto that board so that they can put in their progress, notes, files, all of that type of thing. And everybody can work collaboratively onto it. So the portfolio board that I've added you on, I've listed all of the different portfolios that are there. So for example, here for the schools, summer student program, um, and in th there it shows who that portfolio belongs to. I've actually assigned this person, this, which would be um, Councillor Robinson, to it. So for example, if Councillor Robinson and um, 
clerk treasurer Cormier were working on this together, I also have the opportunity I can add a second person on there. And I didn't I didn't add her to this board because she's not here today, but I could add Paul, for example, or Mayor Arsenault, and then you can put in a due date, for example, over in this column, and then you would get a notification on that due date. So say you have something due, you need to have it in by next week, you'd put that date in, and on that morning of, you'd receive an email saying, hey, don't forget you have this due. Then you also have the opportunity here, you can put in um, an email, say you would put in, um, uh, let's say Councillor Robinson's email so that you can email directly from that board. So you would just click on it, the email would open, it would automatically put the Pulse name, which would be the breakfast program, that would be in the subject line, and it would also CC that email into the Pulse itself, this, this is what I'm referring to as the Pulse, into this little bubble here. There would be a copy of it in here. Each of these Pulses or tasks also has its own unique email address, so you could potentially email directly to it. So say an email comes in, pertaining to that specific project, you can come in here and you can just hit copy and it's gonna copy that email address to your clipboard and you just paste it into an email and you can forward that email so that all of your correspondence pertaining to that particular item it can all be kept in one place and anybody who you've added to this item or to this board can go in and see what's going on with it. Then um, you have the opportunity to add many different columns. So to add a column is pretty simple. You just click on the plus sign and these are some of the columns that you can add. If you go in here, you can add things like, this would be a status column, here's your people, you can do numbers, you can set up formulas, um, dates, timelines, text, long text, you can connect boards, you can mirror boards. So say for example, like in, in my workplace, if we have, um, we've used, let's say for an example, we've used a PO number for uh, specifically generic uh, radio advertising. Well, I now have that board set up that when I click yes or, or whatever the status is, it automatically makes a task on my invoices board so that now I know I need to watch for invoices coming from this item and it will tell me because it's mirrored, it'll tell me who the vendor was, what the cost was, what the PO number was, the date that it starts, the date that it ends, it's all mirrored over there. So that's one example of that. You can put in check boxes, you can put in item IDs, which I find helpful for filing purposes. So say, for example, you're not really sure what to file it under, you can put in that unique item ID column and it will create a unique ID number. So you can use that as a PO number, you can use that as a tracking number or a filing number. You can put in a column for phone numbers so that you can call, like our, within our office, we use an, um, an interbase internet-based phone system, so we can call directly from that board. You can put in a location, so say for example, um, one, of the, one of the new features that they just came out with is you can now share this board or embed a board onto, for example, your website. So you could have a board in there that outlines everything that's going on at Jack River Park, the Salmon Barrier, the Gymnasium, the Rec Center, you can have all of that board displayed and embedded onto our website, and you can have that location where if somebody clicks onto it, it will show them a map of Beldoon, and this is where it's located, and this is the time it starts, and the date, and, and whatnot. You can add a column for files, just puts a column there, and you can drag and drop files there, PDFs, JPEGs, whatever. Then you can put tags, so say for example, your tag was Salmon Barrier. Well, anytime you put in, you can search Salmon Barrier for that tag, and it will come up across all boards. Um, you can have a creation log, which will automatically then log the time that that pulse was created so that you know, okay, well, this task has been sitting there since this date. Then you can also set up formulas that, okay, so the creation log is now um, when something is created on a Saturday, assign it to be done Monday, for example. You can set up formulas like that. Uh, auto number, progress tracking. You can create these buttons and you can tell them what to do. So for example, you put the button there and you can say, when this button is clicked, archive the item, which will move it out of there and it's no longer in your active board, but you'll still be able to find it. Your formula one, country, drop down menus, time tracking, um, there's your email one. So those are all some of the columns that you can add. Then there are also automations. So with your automations, I don't know what this is. Um, with your automations, you can come in here and they have a whole bunch of different formulas or you can do custom ones. So you can say every time period create an item. So let's say every second Monday of the month create 
a specific item that maybe would go on an agenda, for example, or um, every second Tuesday or every second last Tuesday of the month it's gonna be big garbage pickup or something like that. Um, you can set it up so that when a status changes to something, notify someone. So say, for example, one of us has a project or a task for Landon to be taken care of. When that status changes to done, notify whoever it was that asked him to do that. So now you know what's been done. When the date arrives, notify someone. So these are all the different automations that you can, and, and they're, they're endless because you can also do the, the custom ones as well. So what I propose is that we bring this platform um, into the office and in, use it with staff members and with council members. So again, using the, um, the board that I created, if there's something on there, for example, say there's something, even if it's not part of my portfolio, maybe I wanna add something um, concerning the school or something, well, I can add a task there. Councillor Robinson would then know that it's me that, that asked for it, and any comments or any correspondence we have can be kept here so that it's available for, for everybody to see. And it's something that everybody then can go back and look at at whatever time. And Here's another example that I did was for uh, recreation. So you could have all of your gym activities um, if a date is, is um, if it's a private function or whatever, and then you have the different views available. So you could change this to calendar view and now it would show up. And like say, for example, again, you could embed this on the website so now everybody knows what's going on at the gym. You can set it up so that there is a form view. Where is this? So here, for example, if somebody, let's say somebody wanted to rent the rec center, they can put their name and this form goes by whatever columns you have in there. So you could put a date and a name and a whatever payment option, whatever it is you wanted to put in there, and then it would automatically create a task on that board, which would then trigger, say for Daryl, for example, he would get a notification that someone's interested in renting. It allows him then to contact them at whatever, do whatever it is he does with that type of thing. And it also then, will show up on the calendar that now everybody knows, okay, that date is taken. They, don't know, they no longer have to call and say, is this date taken, is, this, is it available, whatnot. So I thought that was uh, pretty useful. Um, it could be the same thing with the Jacket River Campground activities. There could be a calendar and that you could use it for the, same, for the same thing, the rec center, the arena, those types of things. You can create a board for vendors lists. So this would be an example of a vendors list. So you could put here, you, you can put your experiences with them, you can put the contact name, everybody then can work off of that vendor list, we know who's dealing with who, and the possibilities are really endless. Like we use this, we have a vacation board, so whenever somebody wants vacation, they put in the date they want, their manager gets notified, they either approve it, don't approve it. Um, there's, there's many different ways, many different ways to use it. And um, yeah, like these are, these are all the boards we have just in the advertising department right here, and there's many more. You can set them up in different folders. So up here on the top, this is for the advertising. We have a main one, we have real estate one to be archived. Um, and you can also make a board private. So for example, if there was a board regarding financial stuff or whatever stuff that you don't want anybody else to see, you make it private. They'll be able to see the name of the board, but they won't be able to access it. Um, trying to think of some other examples. Does anybody have any questions so far? I have some, but I'm gonna wait. Well. <laughs> I have many, but I'll wait also. <laughs> Why are you all waiting? I'm right here, I'm ready, I'm prepared. Okay, <laughs> I'll give you, I'll have a, I have a couple for you. Okay. By the way, that's a great presentation. And, and I, and when I talked about portfolios, this is kind of what I was getting at, that some, you know, we take that sort of initiation. The, uh, just a couple, uh, for example, training. Now, your staff would have had to have been trained using this. Would they, would, do they have access to it too? Or is it that just you at this point? Nope, we use this company wide now. And how we started using this originally, for everything that we do in advertising, we were, you first, when I first started, we were using Excel, which did not work well because you couldn't update, it wasn't in real time. So if some per one person had it open, somebody else couldn't have it open. Then we switched to Google Sheets. Well, then we ran into the problem, like you're scrolling now through Google Sheets, what's due today? So you have a date column, but there's nothing there really to tell you, hey, hello, what's due today, you know, don't forget. So I started looking online for some sort of an application that would help me keep track of advertising and what needed to be done and deadlines and whatnot, and I came across this. And when I came across this, there was a free trial, which I started, and I think it was two weeks or something like that, so I started using it 
see how it would go. And then I called uh, one, somebody in, in management at the head office and I said, hey, just to let you know, I just started using this and I think it could be very useful in our remarketing department. So he said, okay, well, I'll let the manager of that department know. And anyway, then a week later, a couple of days later, they called me back and said, hey, would you be willing to fly out here and teach us how to do it? So I said, okay. So I went out and I showed her and then she showed them. But really, I'll, give you, I'll show you an example here too. Like this little hourglass here in the bottom, you can search across all boards. So any, let's say you're looking for a PO number. You can't figure out where it is or what it's from. You can put that PO number in there and it, any board that it is in, it will come up. I can search my name and anything that has my name to it will come up. If it's archived, it's not gonna come up right away here, but then there's a little box that you can click that says search archive. So like all of this stuff that is assigned to me comes up, whether it's done, not done. And so it's a good way to keep track of what you have going on. And it can be, um, I don't know, we'll just type in a random number and see if something comes up, but anything, any board with that number, yeah, cool, there's, there's nothing there with that number, but you get the idea. Then this little question mark that's on the bottom, anything that you're trying to do, there's probably, a, it's, if, it's probably answered there, and if it's not, there's a YouTube video. It's very user-friendly in that way, like they'll show you step by step. So really, and anybody, that's what I was meaning when I was saying anybody who's used Excel or Google Sheets, you've kind of got that idea already that it's columns and rows and they all kind of work together. The only thing I have found, like you can also put in, um, which, which I use all the time and I find great, is a sub-items column. So when you put in a sub-items column, oh, let me do that and show you. So now each of these tasks has sub-items. So you can click on this and this would be the sub-items for this. So like, you know, I'll just, I don't know where I'm typing. I think I'm frozen. I'll go to the portfolio one. Okay, so if I click on the sub items, then there could be different items for that breakfast program. You could put milk. And toast. And then you could assign that to each person. Oh, it's not even the sub items part here. And the columns that you put in your sub items can be different than the columns that you have in your task. But some of your automations are limited. So for example, I can't, um, I'm trying to think of an example here. I can still use these as due dates, but say for example, when I want it, it you can actually um, export to Excel, but it won't export certain columns in the sub items. But every day, every week, month, they're coming out with new, new features, um, and they actually give you a little. If you come in here, and getting started, what's new? They'll tell you what they're working on and what they're coming up with and what quarter of the year they're planning on coming out with it. So they keep you pretty informed as to what's going on and what they're working on. And anytime I've had to email them for anything, they're pretty responsive. Like they'll email back right away and ask you, you know, like what the problem is and, and help you to get it resolved. Um, so again, down here, like I said, you can add whatever columns you want separate from up there. But in, the, in each group, so this would be a group, this would be a group, the columns across the groups have to be the same. So whatever sub-items columns I put for this task, it's gonna be the same columns in the sub-items for all tasks on that board. So that was one of the, the things, so I couldn't have different subtasks for school summer students than what I have for Salmon Barrier, it, they'd all be the same. Then you can export all of this to Excel if you want it to for a hard copy sheet. Um, so yeah, it's pretty user-friendly. I'll tell you what, uh, Councillor uh, Rorty Carrier, that's a fantastic presentation. Would you mind 
if if the council members, because I know there are some council members that have questions, mm -hmm. it, when we do our questioning of each other's uh, portfolio or our other members, that's when I'll have them ask questions if that's okay. 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 So that's what we'll do. That's uh, thank you very much. It is. Uh, I can tell you in the last council in two thousand early as two thousand sixteen, we said we wanted something like this, mm -hmm. uh, but it never got done. And I, I hope that we get it done. Uh, we, this kind of system is used every, every uh, business, every legitimate business in council or uh, municipal government is, has one of these. And we don't. And we should. Because communication, real-time communication is the key to having uh, a council, or not a council, uh, um, a municipality that works at its best. So I would say thank you for this. Uh, the one I worked on years ago wasn't nearly as, um, it didn't have as many bells and whistles, that's for sure. This one is much better. So if, if this is the prototype that we're going to use, I would say, yeah, I, I wasn't sure when you first mentioned it to me, but now that I see this, I think it's very good. So that's that's just my opinion about it. Go ahead. This screen here is basically when we start our day in the morning, you come in and you come into this little calendar that's down here in the corner, and this will show you everything that you've had due like this week. So like this, well, this top part here would be previous week, so that maybe you're still working on something, like I'm waiting to find out when we can pick up these items that were printed, for example. And then this would be what was today. Um, so it's really, it's, I don't even know how people would keep track of things without something like this anymore. Well, and that's the thing. Once you start using it, you wonder how you ever did without it. Well, and it saves time too, because instead of us having to email Landon, for example, and saying, hey, Landon, where are we at with the rental space, for example? I can jump on here and see, you know? So I think it would be useful. Thank you very much. And uh, again, council members, if you have questions, you're going to have an opportunity to ask uh, Councillor Rorty Carrier um, shortly. Uh, before we move on to, uh, <clears throat> to the um, portfolio reports, just a, a couple of things that I, uh, I wanted to address uh, before we moved on to the Committee of Whole Proper. Uh, the first one was a, a statement that was given to me. Um, it's a land acknowledgement statement. Uh, that I think is very appropriate considering the the events, the recent events um, that have uh, affected all Canadians from coast to coast. And I think before our uh, meeting tonight, this would be a good time to um, sort of um, strengthen or speak to our relationship uh, with First Nations. So I would like to make this statement and then have a, just a, a brief moment of reflection um, with council. So I'll begin with the statement, and the statement says that uh, we would like to begin by acknowledging that the land on which we gather is the traditional unceded territory of the Mi'kmaq peoples. This territory is covered by the treaties of peace and friendship which the Maliseet, the Mi'kmaq and Passamaquoddy peoples first signed with the British Crown in 1726. The treaties did not deal with surrender of lands and resources, but in fact recognized Mi'kmaq and Maliseet title and established the rules for what was to be an ongoing relationship between nations. And so with that, I would ask council to join me in a moment of reflection. Thank you. Um, the second statement is just uh, a statement concerning um, uh, a recent um, uh, event that uh, directly impacts uh, the village of Beldoon. Um, recently, um, Chief Administrative Officer uh, Lee did uh, pass in a letter of resignation. Um, he and I had a, a brief uh, conversation about it, 
and uh, I respected um, uh, CLE's wishes, and Council has accepted CLE's wishes. Uh, we wish him well. We thank, uh, thank you for uh, your years of service with us. Um, having had an opportunity to work with you in the, the last four years, I appreciate uh, what you've done. Um, I wish you well. Um, but uh, we, uh, I think it's appropriate time for us to, to speak um, to this and uh, to let the people know um, that this, uh, you know, this has been sort of circulating for a few days and, and we wanted to properly acknowledge it. Uh, and we also um, plan, I believe, uh, if Council agrees, we'll probably put um, maybe a statement uh, on our website at a later point that will, uh, you know, speak to more detail, but appropriate detail. We don't, we don't detail, or we don't uh, delve into speculation of any sort. We just uh, will um, put the facts up and just give some, give the idea a, a little bit, or the, the general public a little bit more of idea of, uh, of what transpired and, and our intentions for moving forward. Because uh, ultimately, um, we are responsible to keep the administration of the village going and, and that's what we're doing and we're in the process of that now. And uh, we will keep the, uh, the public uh, truly informed about uh, all of our steps as we go. And uh, as is going to be the case with all of our um, Committee of Whole meetings, uh, our CAO, um, the one who is the uh, interim one who is coming in uh, CAO lead tonight, is actually going to end the evening if he wishes to uh, speak, uh, say a few words. Um, we'll, um, we'll certainly look forward to those. So with that, um, we're going to move forward and move into the um, portfolio uh, reports. It's the first one that we've actually done. Uh, I don't, th am I missing anything? Have I missed anything in terms of, are we ready to move into the portfolio Conflict. reports? Conflicts. I have a conflict on Oh, me. sorry. Councillor Carmichael is um, is acknowledging a conflict, so when we get to that point, uh, just let us know. Um, so the uh, portfolio reports, it's the first one that we're, we're going to do. Uh, it's a work in progress. I think uh, you've seen tonight with uh, Councillor Rory Carrier's uh, presentation, great presentation, that uh, we really want to spark some initiatives. And um, this is uh, one way that we're going to uh, try to do that. So without uh, further delay, we'll get to the uh, council members' um, portfolio reports. And just remember, council members, uh, we're going to allow our council members to speak without interruption for this round. And then the next round, uh, any questions you may have, uh, you'll be able to ask at that time. So the first um, council member uh, up for a portfolio report this evening is uh, Councillor uh, Robinson. Okay, thank you. Uh, yes, this will, uh, so just allow uh, Councillor uh, Carmichael to leave. And, um, okay, go ahead. Okay, I guess I'll start with the salmon barrier. <laughs> uh, I spoke with Chief Richardson um, from Pabotal First Nations. Um, he has already begun looking at funding options for the Jack River Salmon Barrier. Uh, he's been in contact with um, a couple of funding um, partners for that site. So I will be uh, working with him um, through economic development uh, with Marisno as well. Um, so that's one thing that we are um, going to be pursuing. He has a lot of ideas like um, putting in underwater cameras so that people can watch the, the salmon in the pools and kind of maybe up the tourism portfolio for that, um, for that site. So he has some really exciting ideas about that. So really looking forward to working with him. Uh, I also spoke with Claude Doucette about the um, salmon rehabilitation project um, that uh, they are working on. So they bring in a number of baby salmon from the Charlotte Hatchery and, uh, and restock the Jack River. Uh, they're waiting on a report from, I believe, Department of uh, Fisheries and Oceans and the Charlotte Hatchery to see if they can make some improvements to that program. Um, so that report is pending and they should have that in the next couple of weeks. So I'll meet with uh, Mr. Akins and Mr. Doucette um, 
and, uh, and look at some of the, the programs and stuff that they're working on. Um, so that's it for the salmon barrier. I don't know if okay, Councillor Carmichael wants to come back in. Okay. Okay, my next portfolio was uh, dealing with the schools. Uh, I spoke with Mr. Glazier. He put me in touch with the community schools coordinator. Um, so I will be doing research on funding availability through the province for various programs um, to look at um, for the schools. And Cindy and I will meet in September uh, to see what would be the best fits for Jack River School and, and what types of programs we can implement quickly to, to kind of... Um, give those kids um, some programming and that sort of thing. Uh, and finally, I want to speak about um, a ceremony for uh, the children of the residential school system. I've been meeting with a couple of people in the village um, to work out details of a ceremony probably the second or third weekend in August. Uh, I've spoken with Chief Richardson on that as well. Um, and he will attend um, a, a ceremony that that we coordinate, um, and I will be in contact with Chief Labilla as well from Il River Bar First Nations. Um, I will probably have an emotion ready um, next week with more, or the next meeting, uh, with more details on that event and, um, and uh, more details on how we're gonna proceed with that. Okay, thank you, uh, Councillor Robinson. Next up is Councillor uh, Carmichael. I was talking to the clerk treasurer uh, regarding the policies. I'm going to meet with her on the week of July 12th, which will start uh, over the policies and put in order by priorities and decide which ones are no longer required. So uh, I'll be starting that next week. I'll give uh, the clerk treasurer a day or two to get her feedback wet. The finance committee said uh, we need to set a date, but our first uh, finance committee meeting is September, so the week of the 13th. Uh, we also need to change a bylaw to work, all, uh, to work all council to be present and remove the name of the previous council on it as per the orientation we had. Um, also Jacques Ouellette, we need to set a date, perhaps if we could set a date for the meeting of um, July 16th, maybe before the uh, the meeting, we could have uh, an orientation, which would be also video uh, in person if you can come, and we can have it on, like you on YouTube also. Um, the committee, we need to set a date again next week at some point to sit down and appoint people. It's very important we do that uh, sooner rather than later because we need to, you know, we need to start going to meetings and decide who's going to be on what committee and what committee has no one on and that we need to bring, uh, put out uh, announcements in the mail to see if there's anybody interested, if, if the uh, council is not allowed on those committees. So those are all the things that I have. So it's all in the works. So once uh, clerk treasurer comes in, uh, I'll sit down with her and, and we'll work on that. Okay, thank you. I think next, uh, when, when we have a chance to, to go around the horn the second time, perhaps we'll, we'll start to look at a date for that committee uh, well, maybe we'll throw some around because we should get that right. Okay, uh, Councillor uh, Rory Carrier. I was just looking for an update to see where we were at uh, in regards to the rental space. Um, I know that somebody inquired about it, and I'm just wondering what's the next step forward to get her in. Okay, we'll deal with that uh, as we come around. Okay, good to know. So, um, I said interrupted, but I'll just say, could you uh, maybe give a little bit uh, more detail as to what the proposal was by this person, so sort of the public. Uh, um, maybe we can just give the proposal at this point, and then I, I don't see why not. Just basic idea as to what it was. Okay, so we have um, someone um, 
that is wanting to come in and rent the one space that's left uh, on the west side uh, to open up a spa type business doing uh, lashes and nails and uh, those types of things. And I do, I do know that there's already been um, a motion from previous council as to what the rental space, what the what the rent would be. So I'm wondering what is the next step for this person who wants to get in here and, and open up a business? Oh. I know that the last time that we discussed this, there was some sort of differing differing uh, opinions on, on the process. I know, Christy, you had mentioned you'd sort of went through it and it was a little cumbersome and you were looking for it to be streamlined. I know uh, Councillor Bork had mentioned potentially looking at the square footage uh, amount for that space. Uh, I might suggest that, um, you know, we do have a framework in place. I might suggest that maybe I put that over to council and council develop some sort of a policy on it. It's not just this one room that we're going to be looking to fill. Eventually there's other space in this building that you're probably be, want to go through that. Um, right now, uh, you know, like you said at the last uh, meeting, the process that we had used when you went through that was not ideal. Uh, so we would need some direction from council on what the, the, the expected steps are to get this in place. Uh, if it's something as simple as the administration takes it to whatever point, no problem. We, we just get that together so that everyone, uh, you know, council collectively has their say in, in what the process is. And then it's up to the administrative uh, administration to execute on that. So um, maybe the, the next best step is for us to provide the framework for what we have right now, the process, and then that can be evaluated by council. Council can take a look at it and contribute to how they want for the process to unfold. Okay, and I think that's a good point. Now we have Councillor Guitar McDonnell and Councillor Carmichael are working on policies and bylaws. So since we don't have something in place where a, a person who's a local business person or someone who wants to come in and rent space, since we don't have a real sort of outlier for them to, to follow the steps. Maybe we can sort of leave that with uh, you both and you can start on, on that. Does, that. does that work for everybody? It's in their portfolio. Maybe that's something you can do because we certainly need it, right? Everyone should have the same basic steps to follow in order to apply for space. That's only fair. So since we don't have that yet and since we're probably going to get more of these, and maybe that can apply to, to office space, that can apply to all of these things, right? So probably a good, a good thing to have that we don't have right now. Councillor Guitar McDonnell. Okay, um, I have an update on the recreation and fitness portfolio. Uh, Daryl uh, has given me an update on the day camp program for the kids. Uh, he has a total a space for 20, uh, and it runs from June 28th to August 17th. There are 13 full-time uh, youth involved in it right now. Uh, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, there's an addition for four extra. And Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday, there's, an, there's space for five extra, okay? Um, I'm sorry, three more on Monday and Wednesday and two more on Tuesday and Thursday. Right now, that's what they're running with and they have two students. Uh, they've been over at the rec center um, every day and it's being used very well right now. Uh, he's also put in place uh, different um, programs during the summer. He's got some beach yoga, some outdoor Zumba, fitness, and the monthly schedules in the messenger for the gymnasium. Um, he's got a ball hockey camp in progress right now as well as a skateboarding camp. And if anyone is interested, they need to contact Daryl for uh, updates on these programs. Um, my other portfolio is the events committee. Uh, the graduation banners, which look absolutely amazing out front. You know, they look awesome. Um, the uh, chairperson has been kept busy trying to coordinate and set this up. Gina did an amazing job. We had a few hiccups, and that's why it was up a little late, but uh, because the deadline had to be pushed back due to different circumstances, that's what the delay was. And then the ordering of the wood and everything. But at the end of the day, it looks amazing, and uh, 
it's a well done by the events committee. Um, also, there is a co-chair position available on that committee that needs to be addressed. Um, we need to put a call out to the community to see who would be interested in it because that's something that we as a council need to uh, vote on as well, okay? We are the ones who make the final decision about that position, okay? Also, uh, in case everyone wasn't aware, the events committee also spearheads the Eat Fresh program that's brought in monthly uh, to the rec center. Um, that was part of what they do in the community to help uh, in a different manner. And my other portfolio that I'm working on, and thank you to Councillor Burke for sending me some information, is our Code of Conduct Bylaw. This, is, this can be pretty uh, intense to look at. I've you know, covered or read the Moncton and the Fredericton Code of Conduct Bylaws, and they pretty well outline the same things, how we are supposed to act on council in different manners doing dealing with our values and our behaviors and communication and use of um, local government property. These are things that I'm outlining right now. I've read them and uh, look for input from the other council members, but this is a bylaw that is gonna need to be put in place and uh, we'll work on that together, okay? Thank you. Yeah. Deputy Mayor Burke. Okay. Um, I have four portfolios that I'm going to comment on. Uh, uh, however, the NB Power and the Port of Baldoon are two that I will kind of talk at the same time. Um, you know, here recently there was a memo, a memorandum of understanding signed between Moltex Energy, Papineau First Nations, and the Baldoon Port Authority relating to the domestic use and export of small modular reactors. So. This, this is probably something that the port is working on, uh, you know, that type of thing, and, and a sign of the future of what uh, holes in store for basically NB Power and the Port of Beldoon. Uh, you know, as uh, Mayor Arsenault mentioned, uh, the, uh, the Papineau First Nations is a, is a key player in these type of things, so we look forward to working with them also. Um, you know, the, uh, I, have, I have established meetings with the uh, with NB Power, I will be meeting with NB Power tomorrow morning at 10.30, and I am meeting with the Port of Beldoon uh, on Friday at uh, 8.30 in the morning. Uh, that had to be rescheduled. It was supposed to be uh, tomorrow afternoon, but I had to reschedule that. So with that said, uh, hopefully uh, during my next report, I'll have a little more detailed information concerning uh, where these are going and, and what the future holds and how we're gonna move forward. Uh, but I do believe that, uh, you know, with the loss of the smelter, uh, there's no question that it had, that has had an impact on the uh, financial status of the port. But I have all the confidence in the world that the people who were working there will diversify and uh, replace that lost revenue with uh, other sources. So I look forward to working with them and developing that along the line for our community. Uh, you know, we, we've had a, a, a touch on uh, some of the buildings here. That's uh, one of the portfolios I've been asked to look after. Uh, I look at this building here, uh, it, it becomes a question of, uh, you know, we have one meter for electrical, uh, contain, you know, in the whole building. So one of the very first things I will be doing, uh, you know, in dealing with that will be to have uh, an evaluation done on what it's gonna cost to uh, have individual meters installed so that the tenants are gonna pay their own electrical bill. Uh, you know, because for us to, uh, to negotiate a contract, uh, you know, for square footage and this type of thing, and uh, they have a free reign on how much electricity they use, uh, you know, in all honesty, we could end up losing money based on the amount of electricity uh, a customer would use and the rent we're charging. So those are things that I, that, that's the direction I'll be going with that. I also have been asked to look after the RCMP. As many of you know, I am a 20 year veteran of the uh, Crime Stoppers Unit here in the village of Beldoon. Um, you know, the RCMP is probably uh, one of the most expensive uh, items on our, on our uh, budget. Uh, you know, I believe it's pushing almost $800,000 a year for RCMP services uh, for 2021. 
um, you know, with that said, uh, uh, I'll be looking forward to seeing the formula for 2022 because uh, with the reduction of the tax base of the smelter, uh, the tax base of the smelter here in our community, uh, we have a tax base of about $392 million, and give or take. Uh, with that said, the smelter was about $90 million of that. So our RCMP services are based on a formula that the province uses to, to uh, evaluate how much they charge for RCMP services. So it'll be interesting to see, uh, you know, with a loss of a $90 million tax base, how that affects our RCMP services as far as cost is concerned. So those are the things we'll be looking at. So thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, and uh, for me, um, I want to thank uh, Councillor Rorty Carey for reminding me, because I, I didn't have this originally jotted down, but I certainly wanted to speak to it, was the... Um, train derailment uh, that occurred here la Monday the 21st, I believe. We were at a meeting here. Or, uh, I'm not sure if I've got the, the date absolutely correct, but we were at a meeting here. No, it was during the orientation session, sorry. So um, yes, there uh, and, and there have been lots of questions about it. And uh, I received an email um, from a representative from CN, uh, telling me that uh, there was uh, a derailment. It was small in size. Uh, there were uh, no leaks, apparently, uh, no injuries, uh, nothing that uh, the citizens of the village would, be, would need to be afraid of or um, some adverse reaction or effect to it. Uh, I called her back immediately and I said I, I needed verification that that was the case because if we, we, we didn't want to be kind of in a spot where, you know, this was, this was not certain. Um, and she said no. Uh, the person said no, that, that there's absolutely no uh, reason to worry about it. Uh, then I got a call uh, the next day saying, or a couple days after saying, was a little bit larger than originally had been mentioned because when they tried to get the uh, cars back on the track, there were a few more that went off. But again, nothing that would need a, cause us to have any sort of uh, reaction from our EMO representative. And on that note, by the way, um, uh, normally the, the public is, is used to hearing the name Ken McGee as the EMO rep. You probably are all familiar with that name, but he's not, he's not the rep anymore. He's moved on. Apparently, he's uh, going to be doing some work with Restigush. Restigush. So the new EMO for, for us is Scott Poupart. Some of you may know Scott from, from he worked at Glencore for a long time. Uh, so he's, he's the new guy, and I expect at some point I'll try to get in touch with him for a sit down and, and perhaps have him sit down with council. So that's the story on, on the derailment. Um, uh, also, uh, I had a couple of meetings at the Regional Service Commission. Um, the Regional Service Commission is uh, a major topic in the village for a lot of people. It's a major concern. We, we obviously spend a lot of money on the services, and there's some concern that we don't get uh, the, the kind of quality and service that we should be getting back. I, I've noted some of them. Some, um, there's some, some questions about the planning and uh, to make things doubly complicated, the planner who was working for the Service Commission, Mark Buffard, some of you are, are familiar with Mark, he retired. So they have someone doing double duty down the coast and up here, which makes it difficult because obviously it means less time here. So what I, what I did is I, I have a list of concerns from the public and I, have, I am meeting with uh, Mayor Kim Chamberlain from Bathurst, who's the chairperson of the RSC. And she's agreed to sit down with me and have a conversation about some of these concerns. And um, so when I have that meeting, I'll come back with uh, more detail as to, as to some of the things. And if uh, council members have specific concerns that they would like me to take to Mayor Chamberlain, I'll do that. So. Um, that's the, that's the update on the regional survey. Oh yeah, by and also we had there are a couple. Speaking of committees, there are a couple of vacancies that we need to fill for the regional service commission. 
uh, related to the regional service. So we'll get on that when we have our uh, committee's meeting. Um, the fire department, we're going to have our first meeting with the fire department coming up. Um, this will be a, a first meeting for this council and the fire department. And we'll, um, we'll uh, sort of deal with the, some of the concerns that the fire department had. And the fire department, uh, I think, uh, the fire department has come a long way. Uh, I think they can say that. They seem to be a, a, a happy organization, with some good leadership. And there's some issues and there's some hiccups and bumps like with other organization. But uh, we'll have a chance to talk with, uh, with the chief and, and some of the other people on the fire department and see uh, what they, um, an update from them as to what they need and, and what, they, uh, what we want uh, from them as well. Um, other than that, I uh, have a couple of meetings um, uh, with ONB. That was, uh, you've heard the, the name Chief Richardson here a lot. Pabano seems to be very aggressive in terms of forming some economic opportunities and some partnerships. And I think we need to um, really take a, a long listen to see what, what uh, partnerships we can form with them. Um, a very smart guy uh, and, and a guy that seems to do things. Uh, he's not just a talker, it seems. He, he's the guy that's going to get things done. We also have to reach out to Iowa River Bar First Nations. But we have to, um, that, that's a partnership, that's a three-way partnership, and then, of course, the port. So all of the dominoes are starting to fall into place to get some, some economic opportunity revved up. And um, so we'll, we'll follow that process through the summer. Um, I'm trying to think of uh, anything else, and I can't in terms of my portfolio. Um, just, uh, you know, we've, Council, or Deputy Mayor Burke uh, alluded to the MB Power and Portability, and those are also going to be important partnerships. And uh, I expect that we're going to have some meetings coming up quite soon and uh hopefully there'll be some 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 good things come from from those meetings i my sense is that uh there will be uh and now it's time to sort of close the deal as they say in business right so um that's it for me um so uh we can start sort of the second round um, everybody uh, gave great presentations i i uh appreciate uh all the work that council has done. I think if the public's listening, they can sense now that, you know, we're, uh, we're, we're getting things done and that's good. We're, we're not even a month in, so or more than a month. So uh, that's a good job by council. Thank you. So uh, this round, what we'll do is we'll uh, open this up for questions uh, of other council members of some of the things that they've said tonight. If you have questions that you wish to extend to them, suggestions. And if you have a motion that's coming up on the 19th, if you know of it, um, if you could give us as a council a heads up at this point, uh, that would be much appreciated so council members can do their work in preparation for that vote. Uh, okay, um, and this time we're gonna sort of switch it around a little bit. Uh, Councillor uh, Guitar McTennell, uh, if you have any questions of any council members or myself, Deputy Mayor Burke, uh, CAO Lee, please feel free. Okay, I I just had a few questions about Councillor Rorty's um, database proposal. Is, is this the opportunity that I? Okay, um, I'm just it's it's very detailed to me, you know, and and uh, through all the information that I've received as well as everyone else on Council, the things to read, the papers, and the books and things, and I have come across several times that you cannot run a village like a business, and that's my concern with this database. My other concern with this database is the fact that the way you're detailing this, that to me is administration and CAO's jobs. I, it, it was very detailed to me. That's, that's, you know, there was a lot of information that you had processed with, with your presentation. 
which is great. But as a council, do we really need to be involved in that much detail? You know, if we have issues, we go to the people. We go to administration and to the CAO, but I, I just have a concern in how many people are gonna have access to this information and how much is it gonna cost with all these people having that access to it. Uh, Councillor Rody Kerr. So the purpose of my presentation and explaining it in a way that um, staff can use it, they can use it for however they like. If, if they have a use for it, then that's great, but I think it's, it's not, um, my intention to use it as a way to micromanage them. It's a way to have them be able to keep track of things, and it's a way for us to be able to um, keep track of things as well. So for example, if you're working with Landon on a project, instead of having to run to Landon every time you want an update on that project, and he has to stop what he's doing and find that information and deliver it to you, you can jump on there and see what's going on, as well as if I had a question as to where that project was heading or, or what has been done onto it, I can as well. And as far as who all has access to it, it's whoever you want to have access to it. Like I gave you access to that one board or two boards, whatever. I didn't give you access to every board that we have on that account. You have access to one and it's because I allowed you to have that access. And you can, you can also um, limit what columns that person has access to. So you could have access to the tasks, but maybe you don't have access to the costs of it. And so it's, it's, as, it's as open and as closed as what you want it to be. So just because um, if, if Clerk Treasurer Cormier, for example, has a board set up, doesn't mean she has to give access to everybody, but it's a way that she can keep track of things. And if she wants to allow Landon, for example, to have access to that board so that because they're working collaboratively on things, it's a way that they can share this file without it. it it's in real time. You know, so it's, and it keeps track of all the communication and correspondence that's gone through it as well. Okay. The question then is, who's updating this database then? If everybody has information, yeah, like who is putting the information in so that you can see what so-and-so is working on? And, and you know what I mean? Like, it, it's a little confusing as to who's actually going to have so, the information. For example, like right now, I'm sure with the portfolios that you're working on, you have some form of a, a way of keeping track of what it is you're working on and the information you're finding out. Be the same thing, except you would use this instead. So for example, if you have an email that came in, you send, you send an email requesting information on something. When you got the reply to that email, you would just forward that email to that board and it's there. If you want to refer back to it, if you want to say, hey, um, Councillor Carmichael, take a look at the information I just have. It's on the Monday board. You can even tag her. You use the at sign, the same as you would tag someone, say, in a Facebook post. And you can say, at Lillian, check this out. And she'll read it. And you will. And the other thing is, is that it shows who saw it and when they saw it. So nobody can say, oh, I didn't see that. Because now you know they saw it because everybody can see who saw what and when. Just, uh, I think she, uh, and there was a question too concerning um, cost. Do you mind addressing that? The cost is determined by what package you go with and it's determined by how many users. So for example, say you had um, Brenda, Nicole, and Landon as the main users and they set up the, they set up the main boards. Say Landon sets up another board to work with uh, Cameron. He can add Cameron as a guest, just like I added all of you as a guest and there's no additional charge. If he needs to have Cameron on more than, I think it's two boards, now he would have to be um, a paying member. And I think it worked out, depending on what package, it's between 20-some, 30-some, and depending again on if it's the enterprise, each package gives you more features. So I think it ranges anywhere from 20-some dollars per user to let's say 50-some dollars per user. And then it's based on however many users you have. Is that per month? Per year. Or, no, sorry, the, the, that is, the billing is, the prices I'm quoting you is per month, but they bill it annually. Okay, uh, do you have uh, any other questions of any council members? Uh, Councilor Guitar McDonald? I'm just wondering long term if there would be consequences if we put something like this in place. That's all. All right, that's fair. Good questions. Okay, thank you, Councilor Rorty Carrier. Um, insightful answers as well. Uh, did you have any other questions or suggestions? Uh, no. Okay. Uh, so you don't have, as of right now, you don't have any motions that you see coming up, do you? Oh, I did I did set a couple of motions up uh, for the 19th. I wanted to put forward that uh, 
that we need to work on getting a co-chair for the events committee. That, that was a motion I was going to place on that date. And um, I was going to put a motion that we hold off on putting a date, a database in place right now. I'm, I'm not ready for, for that, to do that. Okay. So council members, uh, you can expect on the 19th to have a motion directed to the co-chair issue and one to the database issue. Okay, thank you. Any any additional uh, questions or motions, uh, Councilor Guitar to know? No, I'm good with that. Okay, Thanks. thank you. Councilor Carmichael, you're up. Uh, good presentation, Chrissy. Uh, good information, a lot of it. Uh, I feel basically the same as uh, Councilor uh, Guitar McDonald. Uh, is this our role or is that an administration role? And again, the fees, you, you answered me. So that was pretty much that. So I got my answers on that. Uh, the other thing is for the co-chair, I know that we have a, uh, the secretary that's on the event committee that's interested in, as of now. I was wondering if we could move her to the chair if that's a possibility and then put out for a secretary for the event committee. I'm just asking that a question, if that's a possibility to do that. I guess that's a motion, right? Yeah, that would be a motion to put uh, Kayla as the, as the uh, co-chair and then put out a request to, yeah, and put out a request for a secretary. Okay? So we know those motions are coming. Yeah. Also for the, uh, also for the um, committees, I was wondering if we all could take a, a look at the committees and see if we're interested in any of them and put our name on, on it and then we could discuss that uh, at the date that we, uh, we're going to have the next meeting for it. That way there, if you're interested in a certain committee, I, I realize that uh, Councillor Burke is interested in the Crime Stopper and somebody else may be interested in some of the other committees. That way there, like we'd have a little bit of a start to it and then we could put a, um, a motion to, or a, a letter out to the public to see if for the ones that are available just to the uh, general public. Okay, so let's as a council try and, and, and figure out, we know what we want to do. Yes. Which is to have a meeting and try and yeah. streamline and, and figure out. So the, the, the thing is now we need to know when we're gonna do it and how we're gonna let the public know that this is taking place, right? Yes. Or, um, you know, as we had talked about before, we, you know, there are some issues pertaining to this that are, so is this like an in-camera that we still allow, we let the public know that this is taking place, but it's an in-camera because we are dealing with some uh, personnel, or and we, we still have to decide if this is an in-camera or not. So any, uh, any, any thoughts on that? Um, because if, when we pick a date, and we, we should at least pick a general date tonight, we, yes. we still need to decide the format of that meeting. I don't expect it to be a long meeting. I think we could do it in three hours. Um, there are some, you know, they're gonna be, it, it's gonna be more complicated than it looks yes. at the surface. That I can sense, and that's not a bad thing. But we need to determine, we should determine a date, and we should determine the format, and we should do that tonight. So can I get some suggestions and we'll, we'll come to some consensus or some majority on it. Uh, anyone, let's start with the date. Um, again, I think this is probably a three hour meeting that we can do in the evening. Do, do people sort of agree with that or do they think it's longer or shorter? Time, I'm thinking. I don't think it'll be less than three hours if there's that many committees. Yeah. No, I would say probably three hours, right? Deputy Mayor Burke, what do you think? I think that, um, you know, we, as uh, Councillor Carmichael uh, is responsible for that portfolio, um, you know, at the, at the end of the day, they're, you know, looking at it, it's a long list. And uh, there are, say, more than our share of vacancies on that list. Um, I, I do like the idea of uh, the suggestion of saying that, you know, maybe some council members are interested in some of those, uh, those committees and wanted to be actively involved. And Councillor Carmichael is correct in assuming that 
As I mentioned, I will turn 20 years as an active member of the Restigouche Crime Stoppers Unit, so that it is certainly a passionate uh, committee for me, uh, you know, and, and I have no objection to continue uh, doing that, um, you know, but, you know, when you, when you look at the list of committees, uh, you're asking if it's a closed door session. Uh, I believe it would be in the sense of saying that, uh, um, you know, we will be, we will be looking for people to fulfill those committees and, uh, you know, certainly, uh, you know, we will probably need to, uh, advertise to see if anybody is uh, interested in and maybe in what committee they're interested in. Maybe it could go out in the messenger, uh, the next messenger out, uh, you know, it's a way of getting it out there. Um, you know, again, I don't believe that we should rush it. Uh, a lot of these committees have been uh, vacant for a tremendous amount of time. But, uh, you know, people get involved in these committees and sometimes uh, once they find out what is involved, they're, they, you know, they, they drop off or they, they uh, fail to, say, represent our community on that committee. Uh, you know, the, uh, the only stipulation that I would make as far as a recommendation and, um, you know, uh, the previous council is well aware that I, I submitted a report every single month of my Crime Stoppers uh, meetings. Uh, I would say that that must be mandatory. Anyone not submitting, I mean, if they're meeting quarterly, then they should be submitting reports quarterly. It's part of the recommendation as far as uh, committee representatives are concerned. I agree with that. I, I would say that that's probably a conversation for the night that we ha actually have the meetings, right? So, but he, uh, Council, uh, Deputy Mayor Berg brings up an interesting point, and, and I'd like this to, to move on. So... We, we need to sort of come to come to conclusion, but is the sense that we can wait till August? Um, my, my earlier sense was that this was something that people would rather get done before the end of July. What's Councillor Robinson? Yeah, I think we should meet probably sooner rather than later. We, we do have a number of vacancies there are just, just to move forward, but chances are a lot of these Organizations are not meeting over the summer, but just so we have our ducks in a row and can proceed for the, their upcoming meetings in September. So just just to get, just to tie it up and and, and move on from that, right? So I, I think probably the the sooner we meet, the better. Councillor Rorty Carey, do you have any thoughts on this? I do think it should be uh, figured out before September for sure. Um, whatever council to, uh, decides to do is fine with me. Okay, well, um, we can get something out to the public easily. Um, we just have, you know, getting a flyer out, uh, asking Nicole to put something together and getting a flyer out is not, is not, doesn't take forever to do. Why don't we, why don't we say, um, would anybody object to having a meeting on Wednesday the 14th? I have eat fresh, uh, Till six, so I could probably come right after. I, I volunteer to uh, for the distribution. So, see, I, I don't want. Uh, I know council members, especially the newer council members, must be getting wonder if this, all these meetings, if this is forever and ever. And I don't want to to get t council members tired of of these meetings. I promise you, it it doesn't. It wears off at some point and stops at some point. But this is one uh, that we probably. I think we, we need to. So. Uh, I would be open any night but Wednesday night. Any night but Wednesday? Any night but Wednesday. Okay. Uh, Thursday the 15th. Anybody know that they have any scheduling conflicts for Thursday the 15th? Would we need the clerk treasurer or the CEO here? Yeah, we should. Yeah, it's definitely a meeting where we should have a clerk, yeah. Okay, so let's say tentatively August, or <laughs> August, yeah, July 15th, uh, Thursday, okay? From 6 till 9. And and the format, I guess, we'll put a flyer out. But it, see, I don't, if you're going to do an in-camera, then what's the point of the flyer? Well, Deputy Mayor Burke seems to think we do. P personally, for me, considering there's some privacy issues, there's some other issues that I think 
I, I think I think it for me it falls within the category of having an in camera where the results of the meeting then become public. But I, I again I'll go with whatever council decides. I, I feel that if you have it on the fifteenth, uh, the ones uh, the council the councilors decided uh, which one we're going to be in, we can announce that on the meeting of the nineteenth. Also, like we have a regular meeting on the 19th, we could put it on the um, agenda announcing what, what counselor and that we could let the people know that there's flyers going out also for certain committees if that would. But you've already had your meeting. We have the meeting on the 15th and our regular meetings on the 19th, right? So I'm asking, what are you, what are you saying we put on the 19th? The, whatever the, the counselors here have decided to take on and then letting people know that there's papers or, or there's a request for certain committees going out for for the public. Okay. Does that work then for uh, the majority of uh, council? Okay, meeting on the 15th. It'll be in camera. Results will be uh, published on the 19th. Uh, Councillor Carmichael, are you all, are you done? Are uh, you finished? Okay. Councillor uh, Robinson. <laughs> uh, I have a couple of questions um, I forwarded to CO Lee. Um, one, well, I guess Councillor Gutarmak and I'll start to address this one. I was wondering about the registration for the day camps and um, you had mentioned that there are a number of vacancies. I'm just wondering how those vacancies are filled and how they're advertised. So if you have two or three days during the middle of the week, how do parents know? I believe uh, they have registration forms that are available. Um, he, uh, he said he has 13 full time, okay? And he does have registration forms that are waiting to be picked up by individuals, so I'm not sure what the delay is or what the holdup is, but uh, there are a couple of vacancies available. And he, they could just call him, as far as I know. Um, they are there waiting to be picked up. Okay, because initially there were spots for 12 kids, mm -hmm. and when parents had been calling after, it, they were told it was fully booked. So, so I'm just trying to wrap my head, like, is, is it advertised anywhere that there are now spaces open? Because we increased the number of kids, right? To, so we, instead of 12, they're now accepting 20. So my question is, how do parents know? If I, don't, if I called and I was told it's full, how do I now know that there are vacancies? That's my question. Once again, uh, the forms are sitting on his desk and have not been picked up by someone who had requested them. So I'm not sure the details around that, but they are available. There are 13 full-time right now. There is space for 20, and uh, just waiting for the pickup, right? Yeah. Uh, just for a point of clarity, there, there's 13 full-time, but on Fridays, uh, it's fully booked. So like as of right now, Daryl's got 20 spaces fully booked every Friday. He's got times during the week, certain days, as uh, uh, as Marilyn alluded to, there's certain days that, um, you know, on a Tuesday and Thursday, he might have two spots available. Um, I do know that he does have a, a Facebook page that he uses for putting information out. He does use the messenger for putting uh, information out, and he does put out his contact information. He encourages people to call and register. Uh, but uh, just for a point of clarity, on a day, something like a Friday, uh, he's for the, the length of the day camp, he's already had kids pre-registered, so Fridays are full. Right, so he's got 20 kids maxed out on Fridays. Okay, for that, that answers my question. I just want to know how parents would know. So if it's on Facebook, then then there's some heads up that there are spaces available Monday, Thursday, whatever the day is. Okay. Um, the summer student program, uh, the last update we received, there was one employer who uh, was still waiting for a student. Has that been filled? And then further to that is if there is an outstanding student 
who needs placement, would the day camps be a spot that they could be slid in? Right, so uh, the last report I received was the same. So, uh, and there, it actually, there was one available budgeted space that actually went to a business that ultimately decided not to use it, went to another business that ultimately decided not to use it, and is now with a third business, and I believe they've got a time frame where they're going to need to decide if they're gonna use it. Um, I'll, I would need to verify it with Clerk Treasurer Cormier, but I do believe that if that space is not used by a business, it's all in the same budget. So we could potentially add another person to a municipal position. I'll get clarity on it, but it all falls under the same budget. So if that space is not used by a local business, there should be money in the budget to be able to add onto it. Okay, one last question, sorry. <laughs> uh, regarding the derailment. Uh, there's a slow order on the railroad traveling through northern New Brunswick. Is there any time for, and I, I, it's my understanding that it's due to the condition of the tracks. It's been like that for years and years and years. Is there, is there any update? Are they, are they repairing the track? Like, what is the status with that? Are we just going to go slow through the village forever? <laughs> Well, I can I can find out. I can ask um, the person, the representative that you got in con contact with me. Probably give me some information on that. CN is very normally is quite slow with getting back with information. Um, how I spent years trying to get information on our via rail station. I know Councilor Carmichael did as well, and I found it very tough. I've, uh, but that's a, that's a bona fide question. And I think with the, with the derailment, uh, recent derailment, I think maybe that's a focus on the traffic that's coming through the village that maybe we need to attend to. So uh, I'll, I'll ask. Thank you. Uh, Councillor uh, Rorty Carrier. Uh, one of the questions I had, I've been told by some residents that the uh, pipeline is no longer accessible, like for four-wheelers and, and that type of thing due to the derailment and I'm just wondering was there any information given to you as to how long that would be blocked off or no nothing uh, the only information I received was on the derailment itself uh, but that's a question I can ask too um, yeah I'll definitely ask that for sure I'm sure that's something that they would know okay and one other question um, in regards to the um, events committee the, um, the four by fours that were purchased to put up the uh, grad banners, am I correct that there was the four by fours were purchased this year for those grad banners? Yes, they had to order the wood um, and that was part of the delay because they didn't have the final number. So uh, they had to expand the purchase on that wood. Yeah. And that purchase would have came out of the budget that was provided to the events committee. Yes, I believe so, and it was purchased through Wins. So my question is, what happened to the 4 by 4s that were used last year? Uh, my understanding is that they were damaged. They were unusable this year. That's my understanding. So there's, they're not able to be used for anything else? Well, we're hoping that when they dismantle these this year, that they will be put in a safer place, I guess. That's, that's our hope. No, I mean the ones from last year, like maybe they, like a, if they weren't burnt, there's gotta be pieces of them or, or something. No, no, I, my understanding is they were not usable when they went to get them out of storage, that they couldn't be reused. So they were, they were sent to landfill then, right? Pardon? They would be sent to landfill, like they would be, they're gone. I have no idea what's happened to okay. them. Okay, and I think, see, I think this speaks to again about the importance we've talked about committees making reports, right? Mm -hmm. So I think, and that's a step up again, uh, all, you know, these, the, the improvements that we're making in the committees and the committees have been stagnant for a while. Uh, reports, in fact, the only, the only person I saw come with a report last council, it was Deputy Mayor Burke, I believe. Maybe, Maybe I'm wrong about that, but I think that's the only one I can remember. And if, I, if I'm wrong, I apologize to whomever uh, gave it. But those kinds of things are important. Written reports come twice a year, tell us what's going on, um, have financial reports. All of those things are, 
things that just municipalities should be doing, right? So, uh, and that's a step. That's a step forward that this council is going to make. Uh, anything else, Councillor uh, Rory Care, Deputy Mayor Burt? Okay, just a couple of things that I, um, you know, uh, concerning the presentation of this uh, that uh, Councillor Carrier presented, um, I thought it was very detailed and very interesting. Um, you know, I, I, it was interesting to see the cost of it and, you know, included in the package. However, I did notice that you're extremely comfortable using that program. Um, how long have you been using that program? Mm, I'd say about two years. Okay. Because, uh, you know, there, there's no question that uh, a comfort zone is usually what is the biggest deterrent about change. You know, you have to be comfortable with using uh, a new um, IT tool. So with that said, I, you know, I, I, I think it's, uh, it has some merit. I think that, uh, you know, it, it's, it's good to see. Uh, you know, that information can be available to you without even having to, for example, bother some of the staff and get that information because it's already posted. So I think it has some merits and, uh, you know, but the, the comfort zone would be the, uh, the, the issue. So, um, you know, I'm sure the more you use it, the more comfortable you get with it. So. And also, too, look, the biggest part is setting up the board. Once the board is set up, you get a notification anytime anybody tags you or anything is due or assigned to you. So... There's really not much to do after that. Okay. Okay. So I just wanted to comment on that. Also wanted to, uh, to comment basically on the uh, on the code of conduct uh, uh, file. Um, you know, I, th I think it's extremely important that um, that we all contribute to uh, to what we want that uh, that policy to look like. Um, I have sent uh, a, a copy of. You know, I put together what I believed uh, I wanted to look at, and I forwarded that on to uh, Councillor Guitar McDonnell. Um, you know, but I also feel it's extremely important that every member of council, uh, you know, contribute to that. I also ask that each council member remember that uh, our legal uh, Andre Daig made it very clear to stay simple to begin with, and adapt and amend as we move forward. Uh, he did outline that there were only four areas that we should touch base on, and those areas should be included in our beginning code of conduct. So with that said, uh, um, you know, uh, if, if we take no action, I'm sure this will become stagnant and slow down, so we need to be moving forward or at least put in a deadline so that Councillor Guitar McDonnell can bring forward a document that uh, the council will approve. If you do not submit a, a recommendation or your ideas, then obviously we still need to move forward. So uh, I don't want to see this die or be stagnant. I just want to see it move forward as quickly as possible. Um, you know, the, uh, the other things that I'm looking at, uh, you know, are basically, uh, uh, you know, at the public meeting, uh, the, uh, the financial audit of the, uh, or the forensic audit based on the, uh, on this municipal building is, is going to come back on the table. It was tabled, uh, at the last meeting, but it's going to come back up under, under, uh, business arising from the minutes. Uh, you know, I have no hesitation in saying that there's going to be a motion to, uh, to proceed. Uh, by that time, uh, you know, uh, we will have an acting CAO in place and, I believe it should be one of his first mandates to go out and find someone who can uh, conduct that for us. Um, the other thing I'm looking at is basically a program for snow removal for certain streets within our community. I believe that uh, that these streets need to be uh, looked at. Uh, it's probably at the most two, three times a year that, uh, that these streets are blocked and we have people who cannot get to work because uh, um, they're you know, the Department of Transport evaluates roads based on A roads, which is the Trans Canada, B roads, which is Highway 134, and C roads, which is all the side roads, and those are the roads that are causing us problems. So uh, unless we pick up the gauntlet and move forward, so um, at the end of the day, I will be asking counselor, uh, counsel for a motion to basically put a program together and uh, maybe look at uh, who would be on that and uh, how we're going to proceed. So that's coming up. 
Um, the, the other thing I wanted to mention was basically, you know, how council is, uh, is voting on major issues. Um, I had this on my agenda the last time and I didn't speak on it based on time. But at the end of the day, I want to congratulate council. Council is, is uh, you know, from, uh, from an experienced point of view on dealing with, uh, with motions and, and how council express themselves. I, I, I am very, very impressed that, you know, new councillors moving forward and, and coming with their ideas and how they're presenting them. So well done and, uh, you know, we hope to keep that up. The only thing I will mention is that, uh, you know, on major issues, I, I would hope that you would make your views very, very clear. I'm not asking you to agree or disagree. I'm asking you to make sure that your voice is heard because it is important that the public understand how you feel, they understand how you, you vote, and I assure you that each time you express your views, the public becomes more aware on how you think and what you're doing. So uh, it's extremely important that your views are expressed. Um, you know, <clears throat> the last item I'm going to comment on is basically the, uh, the grass that is going uh, in the old Jacket River area. Um, you know, I know I live in that area, but by the same token, I recognize that uh, our maintenance department can't be at all sides of the communities at all times. But, uh, you know, it, it, it fascinates me how every time they cut grass, they start at the far end of Beldoon. Um, you know, the first two miles of, of the entrance to Beldoon has some houses, and I have no problem with cutting the grass along those areas. But we, we cut a stretch of about five or six or seven miles that there's not even 10 houses between there and Jacket River. Now, as you enter our community into the campground, take a look at the guardrails. Take a look at the guardrails. As you go down the road, down towards Jacket River, take a look at the guardrails. Uh, you know, when you look at the side streets, I mean, our, our major business area right here in the, in, in the, in the community, there, there are places there that it's a good thing the, the people who live on those streets cut the grass, otherwise, you know, the grass would be three feet deep. So I, I recognize that, you know, they can't be everywhere, but I am gonna say it this way. Uh, you know, we look at for students who say, you know, we should have students, uh, you know, look, if we need to hire students to cut grass, you know, whether it be at our guardrails, whether it be, you know, for example, I mean, I'll give you a classic example. We have a major uh, yard right here at this municipal office, and we have a full-time employee that we're paying $22, $23 an hour for cutting grass. In my opinion, that should not happen. If we can't have a student jump on a lawnmower and cut grass here at the village and allow our full-time full employees to do more important issues, then, then we have a scheduling problem. And, uh, you know, when I look at our community, at the end of the day, absolutely nobody may notice that the grass is cut. But I guarantee you, everybody is going to know that it's not cut. So we need to have a better schedule in dealing with that grass and, and dealing with that. And it's been a, a major issue in our community for a long time. So I'm hoping that, uh, you know, we'll have together some program. Because when we're cutting our grass for the first time in the middle of July, that's not good, you know. So I'm going to leave it at that. Okay. Um, and everybody knows how I feel about the database. I, I mean, I brought it up last council. I, I did. So it's no. I mean, it's on the record what I felt about it. I just felt that's the kind of thing that having that sort of communication could help, right? Grass is not being cut. Council or deputy mayor is upset, or mayor's upset. We need to get this cut. Uh, someone needs to attend to it. The grass down here in the baseball fields, they're not, that needs to be cut. Uh, they're not cut in the park where the, the Bell Point Park, the grass needs to be cut. So just, yeah, there's some places around town right now that the, the, the grasses need to be cut. So CAO Lee will, uh, I'm sure, let uh, Public Works know about that. So it's my turn, and I'm, I'm going to put all of these on the spot a little bit. Uh, nothing too bad, just sort of going around and ask each of you a question. Um, so get your opinion on something here. So uh, Deputy Mayor Burke, I'll start with you. We'll go around this way. Just uh, your portfolio, the, and, and you don't have to all please uh, just be brief about, uh, about this. Uh, um, just wanted to ask you, like, what, what is your vision for the NB Power and Port of Beldoon? What, where do you see us going short term and long term? 
Well, the, there's no question that the economic driving force within uh, northern New Brunswick is, is the Port of Beldum. Um, you know, whether uh, businesses develop within the, uh, the municipality of Beldoon is one thing, but at the end of the day, many of the, uh, of the economic driving forces that are going to generate uh, uh, economic development within northern New Brunswick are going to happen at the port. Uh, that is why the village of Beldoon will play a critical role in, uh, in let's say, developing uh, policies, procedures, uh, you know, dealing with the people there, uh, bringing information to council that uh, that where decisions will need to be made, they'll need to be made. Uh, I don't want to say quickly. I want to say uh, in, in all due diligence, so that the decisions we're making are all the benefit of the community as a whole. But uh, the 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 positive point about here, we have a tremendous amount of land available within our municipality. We have a tremendous tax uh, base being just over $1.17 uh, you know, per hundred. Uh, very attractive to businesses uh, in dealing here. And with that said, uh, you know, when I look at NB Power, NB Power needs to be uh, evaluated on where the future lies. And there's no doubt in my mind that with the development of these small nuclear modules, that uh, that is something that uh, basically will benefit not only the port, but NB Power. And when those benefits come to our community, that means that we as a community, based on the tax base, will benefit also. So. Thank you. Uh, next to Councillor Guitar McDonnell, just a question about the, um, well, actually, just a, a bit of a suggestion and then a question. Just on the professional development training, that's something I know uh, Claire Treasurer Cormier has said that, you know, she's been here through a lot of councils, and it's probably something that each council's maybe lacked on a little bit. So maybe that's something to think long term in terms of what, what council would benefit from, from professional development training. Okay, And the second one was on the, the code of conduct. Um, the issue that I had in the last council with the code of conduct, because that came before us, was um, it's the code of conduct sometimes infringes upon legislation that we already have, like the Charter of Rights and Freedoms and um, some of the other legislation, provincial legislation for freedom of speech. So um, have, you, have you found that those, that those kinds of issues sort of pop up too and um, sort of what, what's your sense as to how, how we might be able to, to um, get around those issues, if you have it. If you... I have been touching on the uh, bylaws from Fredericton and Moncton and the ones that were presented to me and they all outline the same things basically, but you have to try to uphold those laws that are put in place by the federal and provincial government so that we as a municipality follow that guideline, right? So reading those and trying to put things together, basically it's all gonna come out the same. We have these, you know, these values and, and, and what we have, how we present ourselves to the public is of utmost importance. So this is, this is what I'm working on right now to make sure that we follow that strategically. That speaks to Deputy Mayor's work, uh, what he was saying too. Yeah, so. yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, Councillor uh, Rory Carrier, just a, a suggestion and a question. I have a question on your, on your database presentation, but a suggestion too. Would, would it be um, valuable? Like, I think the, the local business and, and the local contractors that we're, are, are happy we have as a portfolio, we're, we're sort of focusing on trying to create a, a, a better relationship with them, right? That you know, you're, you know, we 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 know your concerns. We 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 want to address your concerns. We want to form a partnership with you. Might it be valuable to send out a flyer stating that we have a council member, Councillor Rory Carrier, who is now going to be at the head of this portfolio, so that they know that they have someone here that uh, will work with the CAO to to address their concerns where they actually have a contact person on a council. I, like, I, to me, it would be valuable to do that simply because a lot of them aren't quite sure. Now, if councillors have concerns about that, but it's, to me, it would be a nice 
gesture to the local business community and contractors to say, we, we understand your concerns and, and we've, we're, we are going to uh, deal with them in a specific manner. Um, do you have any thoughts on that or do you have any concerns on that? Um, no, no concerns. I think it, it, it could be a way to get the word out. Uh, we could uh, include something too in the messenger or something like that. Um, I had also been thinking about possibly circulating a form online um, using the Monday program, which I was showing you earlier, so that we could get um, an updated list of all the businesses in the area, rather than having them have to come in or call or whatever. It's easy to just kind of fill it out online and it automatically populates the, the fields on the board. Because um, that's one of the big things is I would like to have an actual updated list of all of the local businesses so that we can use it kind of as a vendor's list if we're looking for some sort of service. Well, then check check this list first and see if it's offered here in our village. And if it is, support our local businesses. Uh, any council member want to drop in on that? Does that seem like something that would be maybe a positive thing to do? Maybe in the messengers to say, you know, uh, to local businesses and local contractors, we have a specific portfolio dealing with local businesses and local contractors. Uh, this is the, the contact person on council along with administration. Would that sort of be the first step in extending our hand to that community. Anyone, any thoughts? I'm sorry, I thought there was a call out for local businesses to submit something so that we had something put together. I don't know how far that has gone, but I know that I'm sure they've been working on that for a long time, trying to get local businesses or, or just have some type of updated you know, log of our businesses in our area. So I, I'm not sure. So you're saying to present this to Councillor Christie um, to put that together on her database? Like, no, no, just a, just a flyer to go out to my say. Sorry, just a, like, a fly, like a flyer or something in the messenger would say, you know, local business, local contractors, we now, you know, we're trying to, we, uh, are going to address your concerns. We, we want to build a relationship with the business community. And the first step is by having a council member dealing with your portfolio. So okay. that was just to me, it would, it would sort of signal to the local businesses and local contractors that, you know, we're going to try and, and strengthen our relationship with you. And we take your, ser your, your concerns seriously. Okay. Um, and again, maybe it's something that's not necessary. I just threw it out there because I thought it might be a, might be a nice gesture, but um, I guess we can deal with that, you know, your, at your some worship, point. if I may. Yeah, sure. Um, you know, we we talk about local supporting local. Um, you know, I, I threw those figures out at a previous meeting. Uh, you know, just to refresh your memory, in 2019, we spent four hundred and ten thousand uh, dollars at local businesses. So 2020 was the year of the COVID, so that dropped to two hundred and eighteen thousand dollars. Um, we don't need to apologize for spending that money uh, locally. What we need to do is confirm how much was not, spend, was not spent locally. So the next phase that I believe we would have to ask uh, would be to have, for example, uh, staff come up with a report on how much was spent uh, you know, in other businesses outside our community. That's not to say tenders, that's to say purchases by the village, you know, uh, maybe lumber, uh, you know, uh, goods, uh, that type of thing, um, you know, and with that said, that, that's where I believe we need to go. The last comment I'm going to make is that uh, I do also believe that, uh, you know, if we included in the, uh, in the messenger a, uh, a quick um, explanation of, of uh, let's say, the portfolios that each uh, council member is carrying so that the council, the, the public can say, well, they're looking at a portfolio. Uh, if they have a comment, for example, concerning ditches, well, they know who to call, you know? So that, that, that might I suffice. I think that'd be a beneficial. Yeah, that, that might suffice. Okay. Um, just two left, uh, Councillor um, Carmichael. Um, let me check your list here. There was a question I had. Um, yeah, just in terms of um, the budget. So the budget this year, have you, have you thought of some initial dates like? 
Yes, I already spoke to the clerk treasurer and I want to start the, the um, budget on the week of September 13th. And as you know, uh, last year when we started working on it, we had one to two meetings a week and we have to have this done by November and it really worked smoothly. So if we do it like we did last year, I think it'll be smoothly and we're gonna be working as a team and we're all gonna put our heads together. So um, I think that, that if we start on the 13th, we're, we're gonna be well in advance and have it done bright and early. Um, I, I was the only one, only other council member who was around for those talks. And I would suggest that the council, we, we should try to model it as closely as we did last fall, because last fall we did extremely well. Like, didn't have a tax increase. Everybody, you know, we, we took care of everybody in terms of our seasonals. We were able to, there's, there's some places that we need to probably cut back a little bit. Um, because you know we're we're going to probably lose a little bit more or at some point we're, we've got to anticipate that, but I would suggest uh, that Councillor Carmichael we follow that probably as closely as we can, because it's you know you don't it's no use uh, fixing something that isn't broken, and and that that worked well. But if council members any council members has some suggestions, don't be afraid to to pass them on right at the same time. So the last one is uh, Councillor. Hey, if uh, I may, Your Worship. Yeah. No, um, just to comment on the budget. Uh, you know the um, uh, the process. The process has always been that uh, you know they, they we have standard things that we cannot uh, change. For example, uh, when they do, you know the 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 electric bill for telephone poles. That, that's standard. We don't control that. They bill us. That's it. You know, we, we can't adjust that. Uh, you know, line markings, for example. I, I mean, that, that's standard. It's going to be a standard in the budget. But there are areas that need to be addressed uh, much more detailed in the sense of saying that, uh, um, you know, this is the budget and the departments that are affected by those decisions will and must respect the budget. Um, you know, it's, it's going to become a, an issue. My last question is, is, is that process, when you start that process, is that open to all of council to attend those meetings? Yeah, so so you, you will advise council when the meetings are? So well, that, yes, yeah. uh, once uh, we have a meeting in September, the September 7th, and I, I'm going to, well, probably in August, we'll just start discussing when uh, approximately the first meeting and it should be and and in orientation they did say that all council is involved in these process in the process be, because the the last comment I'm going to make is that I, I do believe that's a that is a positive thing in the sense of saying that you know all the things that are standard and we do not control that you've got to pay the bill um, getting those out of the way quickly is 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 really a very good idea. It doesn't take all of council to approve, you know, the line markings and and that type of thing. So with that said, uh, when it all come when the budget comes before council, it makes it a whole lot easier to make decisions on where what we're going what projects we're going to do and what ne ones need to be adjusted. So that's a good idea. And uh, did you want to say something? I was just going to say, and that you're right by getting those numbers out of the way first it makes your budget much, much easier to deal with, right? Because then you're not speculating as to how much you have or where we are or what's, what, you know, what do we need to spend on? It's already taken care of and it's in, the, it's in the budget and it's taken care of. So you're absolutely right. That's the way to go about that. Okay, the last thing for me, uh, Councillor Robinson, I, I wanted to address something. Um, the operational plan for the campground. And I've got it here, I've marked down uh, uh, that we can get the showers and the washrooms. So uh, I received the, uh, it was given to me at first, and then because Council Robinson had that portfolio, I asked those who uh, had the complaint to address Council Robinson. And there were two things. The, uh, the most important one was the, the washrooms at the park are only open till nine o'clock. And I'm not sure if that was something that the province brought down because of COVID, but it's very, it's, it's awkward. Uh, I'm not even sure if that's the word, but it's very, you know, it's, it's a constraint 
and it's tough when people are at the park at nine o'clock. So maybe I should actually adjust that to CLE. Is is that something that's provincial regulation? Can we, can we do something about that? Yeah, no, we can absolutely do something about it. The only provincial regulation that came down was uh, when we we're in the orange phase of recovery. So when we're in the orange, they suggest that your facilities shut down showers. Outside of that, you have the full capability of doing whatever you like. Uh, so if we want to uh, open the bathrooms 24-7 again, we do that. All we have to do is update our operational plan. Uh, we want to open up our showers, we do that. We just update our operational plan to reflect. So very easy to do. Um, we, could, uh, we could turn it around very quickly. Okay, so the showers and the washrooms, I think that's what we need to do. I think we need to update our plan. Um, and that'll take care of that. There was a, a Wi-Fi issue too, but uh, can, can it, I, uh, oh yeah. Can yeah. I just say something about the showers? Um, yes, it's nice to have it open longer, but each and every one of those tra uh, trailers normally have uh, bathrooms and showers in there. Why would we need to extend it? Um, because, you know, really, especially at this time with COVID and there's people that's going to be coming everywhere, like that's, that would be extra work and you want to make sure that you have your showers clean. They're not going to go at four o'clock in the morning and start cleaning showers. But I'm just saying, like, I know you say it's awkward, but yes, but it, these trailers all have uh, their, their own, uh, their own bathrooms. Well, while we have everybody here, let's just do a show of hands. Uh, who wants to update the operational plan on showers and washrooms? Okay, done. Um, I think that's it. Uh, I did want to extend, uh, first of all, uh, again, uh, thank CAO Lee. I believe we're at the end of, uh, Councilor Robinson, did you have something? Sorry, no, there's just I, one thing that was missed on the agenda was the variance for Ron and Betty Legacy. Yes, for sure. Now that's, so tonight, for tonight, that's a discussion. And um, now it's an important discussion. We need to have that now. It's probably going to go a little while, but let's have it. Uh, is that the only thing? I'm sorry, I has gone down there. Okay, so um, Deputy Mayor Burke, um, you're in portfolio uh, properties. Um, take it away. Well, there's no question that um, you know s some of the previous decisions in the past have uh, have put uh, trailers or you know mobile homes or whatever you wish to call them uh, in various locations throughout our community. Uh, here we have a request from a, from an individual who uh, bought a piece of property. Um, basically off the Culligan Road, um, you know, they're a quarter mile up or whatever, so they're basically out of sight, out of mind. Um, I also know that uh, there are trailers that gather, uh, travel trailers that gather down uh, on the beach there on a piece of property. There's three and four and five of them sometimes down there. So uh, they spend the summer there and then they basically take their trailers and go home. With that all said, uh, you know, I, I, I look at this request. Uh, you know, we have people who want to spend the summer here in Beldoon. Uh, you know, they bought a piece of land so that they would be able to do that. And they want to put a 27 or 28 foot trailer on there that they could leave there uh, so that they have uh, a place to come and go as they please. Um, for me, uh, you know, I would highly recommend that we submit a variance or ask for a variance to be done and allow them to, uh, to proceed with that request. Okay. Um, would that be, are you asking us to do that tonight as a show of hands or as a uh, motion? Uh, I, I don't know if I, well, yeah, I, I can make a motion that way other councillors would have the privilege of, of commenting. Uh, you know, with that said, uh, I'm going to make a motion that we apply for or have them apply for a variance through the Planning Commission uh, and that the council is, uh, is in favour of that variance being approved. So you're going to do that on the 19th? I'll, I can do that on the 19th. Okay, so heads up to all council members, uh, there will be a motion coming in terms of the variance. Anyone have any questions on that or? I actually do. Uh, I have no problem with the variant, but I'm wondering, uh, when I read his the letter, he's, he's I don't know, what he, is, is it the type of motor home he keeps bringing up or is it something he wants to build over the motor home? Or, I wasn't sure what exactly 
what he had exactly. Like, I know it was, it seemed like a travel trailer, but I wasn't sure. The way he was talking is like he wanted to build on that trailer, or on that. Uh, I'll jump in there. They want to build a store. They want to erect a storage facility. They can't right now because there's not a structure on the land. They only use it for, in order to put a storage facility on it, they need to have a permanent structure and they don't have that. They're only using their travel trailer. So I believe the variance that it's going to need to be approved by council will be a variance to allow for them to put the structure on, even though they do not have uh, a permanent structure structure on that property. So that's what the variance would, would need. Does that make sense? In order to put like a garage or a storage unit on a piece of property, they need to have a permanent structure on it and they don't. They use the property as a, um, you know, they, they park their RV on it. So that's what the variance would. Uh, now, Deputy Mayor Bork, do you know for sure if they've already gone to the Planning Commission with this? Yes, they were told that, uh, you know, based on their letter, and I'm reading, strictly reading the letters, that uh, they went to the uh, Planning Commission and that is exactly what the Planning Commission uh, explained to them. Uh, you know, with that said, uh, you know, the Planning Commission are just doing their job. Uh, the proper procedure was to, to send a letter to Council. They have done that. Now Council is looking at the issue and uh, the decision, as far as I'm concerned, lies in Council's hands as to how we want to do that. So that is why I have no problem bringing forth a motion on the 19th and uh, we'll see how Council feels about it. And we have to remember that the RSC, they have, they're trying to do their job. Right, they have a job to do so that uh, we don't have structures all over the place of various heights and various, you know, degrees of, of uh, disrepair, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So they've done their job, and now the next step to to sort of remedy that for in cases like this is for council to say, yeah, but we we understand the spirit of the law, but for us we either a say that you know we, we we give permission or we don't right is there a well or anything on this property have they put up any structure i haven't seen it that? so i couldn't speak to it uh mayor Burr? i i don't think so i think they probably at this stage uh you as councillor carmichael pointed out prior to uh i mean all these trailers come with their own washroom and their own shower and things like that so i think that's about the extent that they're at at this moment in time okay so that's coming okay folks now i i cannot for whatever reason bring up my agenda on here have i missed anything else because I, I don't want to miss anything and you would have it in front of you just take a second to take a look and tell me if i have it there may be one or two on mine, but don't worry about that. As long as I have all yours. Yeah, I, you know, I'm going to wait on that. Yeah, I'm going to wait on that, get some more information. So, uh, has everyone had their, their uh, agenda items uh, dealt with? Okay. Then... Uh, as will be habit, uh, our administration CAO is going to have normally the last word at these meetings and uh, sort of give clarification and answer some questions that they may have felt that were out there that weren't uh, dealt with. So, uh, but CAO Lee, you can use this for uh, any purpose you wish. Yeah, no, thanks, Paul. Uh, I'll, I'll just speak real briefly on uh, on the resignation like you uh, alluded to before. So I did submit my resignation. Um, first and foremost, I definitely want to thank the municipality uh, for for the opportunity and for the experience that I've, I've got over the last four years. Uh, certainly wasn't an easy decision. Um, uh, it was, uh, you know, a lot, a lot of thought, a lot of effort went it went into it. Uh, ultimately, I think um, uh, for me, I was, uh, I, I think I'm looking to, to to lean more back into the the private industry, uh, get away from uh, the public a little bit. Um, but uh, you know, I've uh, I'm in the process of moving to Beldoon. I'm still going to be involved in the community. I'm really uh, looking forward to do watching con the, the continued pro uh, pro uh, progress by this council. 
Uh, and, uh, and I just wanted to acknowledge I did have a lot of um, community members reach out uh, in, in the last couple of days. So that was fantastic. There's, I've, I've met over the last four years, there's some incredible people in this community. Uh, and uh, I, I'm, I'm going to be very, very proud to be uh, uh, a part of it uh, in, the, in the next few months. So um, thanks, Paul. Thanks for the opportunity to speak. I appreciate it. Uh, and thanks to all of Council. Thank you very much. Um, so, Council, uh, this wraps up our uh, Committee of Hall meeting for this week. I appreciate it. You all did very well, and uh, thank you for your uh, contributions. Um, can I get a, a motion, a move to motion to adjourn? I move that the meeting is adjourned at 8.58. Can I get a seconder? Second. Councillor uh, Guitarmington, all seconds. Uh, on the question? All those in favor? All those opposed? Okay, thank you.